glad in it. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord. We're just grateful to be able to participate in corporate worship. We should have something to be thankful for today. We, we should come uh, with thanksgiving in our hearts, having an expectancy of God confirming what we have already heard from him during the week in our praise and meditation time, our prayer life. Every day should be about focusing on the kingdom. Matthew 6, says to seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. So today, as you have spent time this week with the Lord, what did he tell you? Did he give you a peace? I can hear David saying that he gives me a peace. I'm beside the still water. He restoreth my soul. How many of you have been restored in this season in your life where the Lord has touched your heart, he's touched your family, he's increased you in understanding, and the more you focus on him, you get an understanding. Amen, amen. I have a scripture I wanna to read to you all this morning. And I want this to really be imparted into you because it's important for us to make sure we, we stay in perfect peace, inner peace, inner peace, inner peace. We've been talking about that peace and we know where the spirit of the Lord is, there is peace. I know sometimes we go looking and for places to find our peace, but God says, I want to dwell in you. I want to be the peace in you. So if you have peace on the inside, he's there. When people try to pull you out of your peace and try to uh, disrupt you and confuse you and make you feel anxious and all kind of other things, God says, get back to that peace on the inside. How many of you this morning have a peace? How quiet this morning. How many of y'all have a peace? Let me see you stand up and clap. Do you have a peace? Do you have a peace? Amen. Amen. If you have a peace this morning, the word of God tells us in Philippians 4, verse 1, therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. I plead with you. He goes on to say, rejoice in verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. So are you rejoicing this morning? Are you rejoicing in the Lord? He goes on to say, let your gentleness be evident to all. Are you gentle? Are you kind? And I know in a gentleness and kindness, sometimes there's some long suffering. Then he goes on to say, the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present, present your requests to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, is he guarding your mind today? Is he, is he giving you that peace today? So I just want to say a quick prayer and then we'll get into our praise portion of our worship service. For those of you online, it's so good to have you. Heavenly Father, we come together in the name of Jesus and we just say thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. We say thank you for showing us the way, that you are the truth, the way, and the life. No one gets to the Father but through you. So we thank you this morning for giving us our peace. We thank you this morning for sustaining us in times that seem to be so uncertain. Prices in the grocery stores are, are rising. They're higher and higher. People losing their minds and doing things that we have not ever seen before at this level. But we thank you this morning, Lord, for keeping us in our right mind, for giving us a contentment and godliness, which is great gain. We say, Lord, have your way this morning in this service. We're not anxious about anything. We just want to be in your presence. We know your presence is in us, but we want to also feel the presence of you in this place. And for our online audience, 
let them feel your presence in their personal space. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' holy name, let the church say amen. The goodness of the Lord would wait on you. Hallelujah. I will wait on you. Declare that today. I will trust in you. The only God to trust in. I will trust in you. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Just keep praising his name when blessings go up. When praises go up, let me say, blessings come down. Hallelujah. Come on, let's keep praising God in this moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we love you, hallelujah. God, we trust you, hallelujah. God, we submit to you, hallelujah. Come on, lift the sound in this room. Father, we trust you, God. We believe in you, God. We love you, oh God. We, have, we, have, we, we submit to your throne, oh God. We submit to your will, oh God. I need some radical believers to say that this morning, that we trust in you, that we will see it. We will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Come on, if you believe, in God if you believe in the Jesus Christ who went down in the grave and got back up I declare that we will be believers who will stand upon the word of God hallelujah that song oh hallelujah that says that we will remain confident <laughs> confident that we will see the goodness of the Lord I want to submit a question to you before we pray. Is God worthy of your trust? If we remember a passage in the Bible, we remember Exodus. We remember the first generation of Israelites, they never trusted the Lord completely. Even when God brought them out of Egypt, they still said in Exodus 16, verse 3, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted, but you have brought us into the desert to starve this entire assembly to death. They got it twisted and believed that slavery was better than being free. Even when God told them that I will bring you out they even, they sat there and said that my past season was better. So today I want us to break that spirit off of our backs. <laughs> there are some things that God is trying to move us into and we are romanticizing past seasons of our life. So I want us to come to the altar this morning. If you are expecting that God is going to be faithful to his promise over you, I want us to believe this morning. And when we come to the altar, I want us to not take the past seasons back. I want to break romanticizing those seasons off of us. We got to break it off this morning. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare over everyone under the sound of my voice that they will be free from any type of slavery of sin that is trying to hold them back from the promise that you have set forth. I declare healing in the name of Jesus. I declare trust in the name of Jesus. I declare that you help them in this season. I declare that you open our eyes and that you open our ears to hear from you, God. I break off any extra noise in the name of Jesus I break it off in the name of Jesus you are worthy of our trust oh God you are worthy of our submission oh God you are worthy of it all oh God so we will not look back we will not turn the other way but we will keep our eyes set on the glory of the coming of the Lord we will set our eyes we will gaze on you oh God you are our you are our hope you are our joy we will not look behind us but we have so much to be expected for your children cry unto you this morning we need better faith we need better hope we need to hold on a little bit tighter so help us father hold us close oh god hold us dear oh god help us father and we repent we repent we repent for any time that we are reflecting on something you've called us out of we repent when we want to go back to the shackles of sin that you've delivered us from i i declare that none of us in the room under the sound of my voice
life, Jesus, that you will raise us to be better believers, that you will raise us to trust in your word, that when we doubt, that our first response will be going to the word, that our first response will be prayer. So, Father, comfort your children now in the name of Jesus. We need you, oh God. We want to believe that we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, but sometimes we fall short. Sometimes we can't see through. God, help us. Help us. Help us to see it through. Help us to see the calling through. Help us to see the deliverance through. Help us to shake it off. Shake off anything that does not glorify you today, God. We do not want to be like the first generation of Israelites, but we want to trust in you completely because you are worthy of our trust. You are worthy of our trust and adoration. So thank you for being the living God. Thank you for being a God who is near and omnipresent. Thank you for being a God that goes before us. Thank you for being a God who paves the way. Thank you for being the lamp under our feet. Thank you for being the guide to our path. Thank you for calling us and setting us apart. Thank you, God. We thank you in this moment. We thank you. There's no other, there's no other one like you. There's no, we tasted and tried it all, but nothing compares to the taste of you God you make us happy and joyful you fill our cups to overflowing so we trust in you God with all of our heart our mind and soul and spirit we commit to you we commit to this covenant that we have made with you God we love you Jesus hallelujah 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. just speak to your father this morning I don't know specifically what it is that's holding us back I don't know what it is in your life that you're wrestling with but I just I submit to you if you speak it in this moment your father hears you hallelujah hallelujah thank you God thank you God thank you God thank you God you are the healer God you are the restorer God you are you are my provider God I trust you with my finances God I trust you with my family God I trust you I trust you with everything oh God God we lay it right now at your feet and we will not take it back we will not look back to Egypt but we will look into the promised land thank you God 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 if we had a thousand tongues it would not be enough hallelujah if we had a thousand tongues it would not fully represent what you mean to us God we would still fall short words would still fail so father thank you now thank you for calling us out of Egypt thank you for bringing us out thank you for being a deliverer and strong tower thank you for being everything to us everything Thing to us thank you God there is no one like you and there is no one like you there is no one on earth like you there is no one there's no better lover than you God there's no better fighter than you God we put our trust in you we put our trust in you Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, speak to your Father in this moment. No one satisfies my heart but Jesus. No one satisfies my soul but Jesus. No one satisfies my soul but Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for always being with us. Thank you for speaking a word to each of your children. You are worthy of our trust. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise be to God. 
Let's just stay there for just a few minutes. Just think on the things that God has done for you. Let's just stay there for a minute. If we could just bring that music up just a little bit more. Just bring it up. Bring it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we just bring it up just a little bit more. Just bring it up. Thank you. Think of what he's done for you. We've been in a a time that has stretched our minds. Uncertainty. Fear. Depression. Anxiety. Because everything was trying to consume our minds that should not be there. I will remain confident in this. I will trust you, Lord. I will trust you with all my heart. I will lean not on my own understanding. I will acknowledge you in all my ways. For it is you who direct my path. So right now, brothers and sisters, I want you to stay there. I want you to think about what you have been worried about. What has your mind not in peace? Now I want you to think about what had your mind not in peace a year ago. Five years ago. Ten years ago. Fifteen years ago. Twenty years ago. I don't want to go any further because I don't know if we have anybody who can remember that far back. Now the things that you worried 10 years ago. I want you to look at yourself right now. And what were you worried about? And look where how far God has brought you. We're taking the time back 10 years ago, five years ago, two years ago, you were worried about something. It had your mind nowhere near perfect peace. But you were worried. You were consumed. It, it brought depression and anxiety. And you heard the good news. You heard the gospel. And God said, don't you worry about anything. And in all things, pray. Some folks, some of you, some of us, don't have a strong prayer life. Do you talk to the Father every day? Or do you talk about everything you see? See, when you see things that want to bring you worry, God says, when you see it, pray over it. So do you pray or do you talk about what's going on? You got to pray. See, our faith and the tool that we have that will disrupt worry is prayer. We got to declare God's word in our prayer. I don't know about you this morning, brothers and sisters, but but we have to declare what his word says. We Listen, our prayers don't move God. It's already done. He's saying he's waiting for us to catch up to his word. He's already moved. It is finished. He's waiting for us to realize the power that we have in him. So when I pray for a situation, I remind the father what he said. Father, you said by your stripes we're healed. So why are we talking about situations where people are hurting when we're not praying over the people? Lord, I know you said people suffering. Why are we praying over the situation and we're talking about it? 
Lord, you said in your word, you would never leave us or forsaken us. I'm asking your word to manifest right now in this situation, in the name of Jesus. The reason we don't have any peace is because we ain't praying. We don't think prayer is effective. We think just talking about a situation is going to help it. So right now, as you look back over your life, because I want to clear out that spirit of worry. What was it you were worrying about a year ago? Did it happen? How are you right now? See, God wants you to know, and he says, don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow has enough issues of its own. Focus on today. And after you've prayed, then God will show you what to do in that situation. Sometimes God will say, don't do nothing. Sometimes God will say, do this. God says in Romans 8, 28, through the apostle Paul, all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord, those who are called according to his purpose. You're not going to be able to fix the situation, but you can be a part in the fixing. What you see may not be what needs to be fixed. So pray to the Lord first and Lord, show me what I'm supposed to do. Lord, I might tell you right now, you so worried about everything that you ain't no good for nobody. Pray, pray, amen. Praise be to God. I just, just give him a hand clap and a praise this morning. God has been so powerful in this time in our lives where we have really just seen his hand in so many ways. And we just have something to be thankful for. But before we get into the word, I, I just want to welcome our visitors. And I, I think I'm, is that Sister Thelma back there? No, that's not them. Okay, I'm sorry. That's, oh, okay. The lights are in my eyes. Okay, I'm sorry. Connie, I, I mean, I think that's Connie, right? No, that's not Connie. See that? I'm not going to even call out nobody's name because I'm going to get in trouble. My wife says, put my glasses on. Okay, but maybe the lights are in my eye. I can't see. <laughs> Pastor Tell him, why don't you come on up here, man? Come on up here by me. My brother, my brother. Work called him earlier today. And uh, he said, Pastor, I, I'm ready. I'm, I'm going to be there. And uh, I know you were sitting by your wonderful bride. It's okay. Lady Kendra, if you just want to sit over there, you can too. You are right where you are. You can sit there too. I just wanted to get him ready. That's all. Amen. Let us stand. Let us get ready to go into the word as I pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for what you are already doing in our lives. Thank you for the word that you have given us through song. Speak to me, Lord. Decrease me so that you might get the increase. As the word which goes forth may penetrate the heart of those who come to receive. It's in your holy name. Amen. Now, you know how we do it here at BGI, brothers and sisters. I want you to raise your Bibles. And I want you to shout it as loud as you can, like you're at a Memphis Grizzlies game, FedEx Forum. You're shouting, you, you're seeing Jay do his thing, slam, dunk, and everybody, ooh, right? This word is Jesus. This word, I believe it, I receive it in his holy name. You all may be seated, brothers and sisters. It's good to have everybody here this morning. You're all looking fabulous. There is a word this morning, and that word is coming from, I'm having issues with my technology. Acts, go ahead and put it up for me, media team, the book of Acts. And we're going to be coming from chapter 17, verses 1 through 9. That's why we don't need to depend on this. That's why we need to just keep this open. Amen. Acts, the 17th chapter, verses 1 through 9. You know, the old folks did this, and not everything that they did was bad. Everything they did have been good. It's added on to. So let's stand for the reading of the word, the reverence of the word. It's so important. And it is written, when Paul and his companions had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue. 
As was his custom, Paul went into the synagogue, and on three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead. This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Messiah, he said. Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and quite a few prominent women. But other Jews were jealous, so they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace, formed a mob, and started a riot in the city. They rushed to Jason's house in search of Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the crowd. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some other believers before the city officials, shouting, These men who have caused trouble all over the world have now come here, and Jason has welcomed them into his house. They are all defying Caesar's decree, saying that there is another king, one called Jesus. When they heard this, the crowd and the city officials were thrown into turmoil. Then they made Jason and the others post bond and let them go. Brothers and sisters, I want to share with you from this message, the gospel gives you peace. The gospel gives you peace. You may be seated. Have you found your peace? If you're looking anywhere other than Jesus, you won't find peace. Where the peace of the Lord is, that's his presence. Paul, an apostle of the gospel, is doing his mission work. He's going on several journeys to spread the good news. Jesus decreed to us, declared and told us in Matthew 28, verse 16 through 19, to go into the world and to, what? Spread the gospel, teaching them all things and baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Paul was very, uh, very effective and very passionate about going to share the gospel that gives people peace. You see, up until he met Jesus on that Damascus world, he, he had an inner turmoil himself. He thought, Pastor Taylor, he was God-fearing. He thought he was honoring God. But then when he met Jesus, he realized just how far off he was. And when he met Jesus, he spent three days in blindness. And at some point, he was brought to a peace. Peace, peace, peace. No one really wants you to have peace, brothers and sisters. And in the text, you can see that, that Paul uh, and, and, and Silas are talking to some people in this area. And the beautiful thing about it, the first thing Paul did was when he got to town, he found the church. <laughs> he found the church. He found the synagogue to go to. That lets us know, Pastor Taylor, that it is important to go to the houses of God. Because even in the houses of God, you don't have a whole lot of believers. You have a whole lot of people performing. They're performing. They're performing. They're doing certain things, and it looks like worship. It looks like something great, and they're performing in front of you, but there is not the presence of God. There is no peace in the situation. So Paul is in the synagogue, and he's telling them the Messiah is the way. See, anybody know anything about receiving the Holy Spirit? It brings you peace, right? It's not an it, it's a him. He brings you peace. So Paul is trying to deliver to them the gospel of peace. But in that space, you have some Jews who believe instantly. Then you have some Greeks, some, some foreigners, Greeks who are in their land, they're foreigners, and, and they too believe. They, they are religious people, but they're idol worshiping. They are worshiping an unknown God. If you go later down in the text, you'll see how Paul masterfully uh, talks to the folks to find common ground. As a matter of fact, we'll deal with that next, next week. But in this moment, he's telling them something. Hey, guess what? I know your soul has been stirred, but let me tell you what will give you peace. His name is Jesus. Paul is bold, but guess what? He could have kept it to himself. He knew that he had a higher calling, and it was to suffer many things. 
So he goes there, he tells them, Greeks receive, some Jews receive, but even in the same church, in the same synagogue, you have some so-called God-fearing people who got mad, got angry at what was being said. And instead of them trying to get an understanding, they went out and identified with some bad characters to bring them in and disrupt the situation. How many folks do you know that you worship with? You think they're holy, but they got hell all on the inside. You wonder why some of the church officials have taken on this sort of attitude of, listen, I'm going to deal with you because they know that they got to deal with some demons. In this moment, we see Paul, he's giving them a gospel of peace. And can I ask you a question? When you heard the gospel and accepted it and you began to grow, did Jesus give you peace? The message is not a message to divide. It's to bring people to perfect peace. But yet you had some Jews who were wolves who went out and tried to disrupt a situation. They came on back looking for Paul and Silas, but see the wisdom of God, you can't catch us until, you know, you, you can't catch us. We move. We know what you're doing before you even do it because the Holy Spirit is always a thousand steps ahead. So they pulled out the two culprits who said, you let them in. <laughs> you let them in. And then the whole town was thrown into turmoil. Now we do know that when you are in a church, in a building, with other believers, please understand that everyone is not saved. That's why Paul went to the church to share the good news, because you have people together. There's an opportunity. We have heard people talk about the building's not the church, and you're the church. Yes, that's all true. The church is you. But when people are together inside a building, you're supposed to go to the church and share the good news. And that's exactly what he did, and folks didn't like it. So I want you to know, you will know them by their fruit. The word of God tells us that you will know them. Jesus said to us, you will know them by their fruit. Many of you are misidentifying certain things. In Matthew 7, uh, uh, 15 through 18, Pastor Cheryl, I know you don't have this. God had me put this in at the last minute. He told me to tell you to watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing. In other words, they try to look like you. But inwardly, they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Brothers and sisters, let's look at the fruit of some of these Jews out here who Supposed to be God-fearing, but yet now they're lying and manipulating the situation that's supposed to give them peace. The scripture, the gospel is fulfilling. They're supposed to be students of the word. They're supposed to know the word, but when the word came to them, they rejected it. How many people do you know today who sit in church Sunday after Sunday or Saturday after Saturday, they hear the word, but they reject it by how they live? One of the things I want you to know, the word is judgment. The word is judgment. We're not supposed to judge people, but we're also supposed to assess people. That's why Jesus said you will know them by their fruit. The reason some of you are unnerved right now in your lives is because you think some of the folks who are walking with you think just like you. And that's where you made a mistake. Maya Angelou told me once, as I was watching her on the screen, let me get that right. When they show you who they are, the first time, believe them. Some people have shown you who they are 100 times and you choose to ignore it. And now your internal peace is disrupted because you're focused on their distractions. 
And what the Jews were doing who went out and looked for bad characters were to disrupt and distract the message of the gospel, which gives you peace to keep you in an inner turmoil. You have to be careful who you surround yourself with. You'll know them by their fruit. You can make a judgment. You can't condemn them, but you can make a judgment when a person shows you who they are the first time. Believe it. And if it does not line up with the word, back away. You're not condemning them. But you don't want that stuff in your head because when you are distracted, it's hard to get to know the Savior. Where his peace is, where there is peace, if that peace is in you, that's his presence. If you can stay in perfect peace in his presence, you will learn more about him. The wisdom of God he freely gives to you when you are in his presence. So when you are dealing with a situation, you have to stay in peace so that God can give you his wisdom on how to deal with what you see. Everything you see today is all about keeping you away from knowing who the Savior is. Intimacy. Many of you have gotten to the cross. You're saved, but you haven't moved beyond the cross. Oh, I know I didn't mess some folks up on that. What do you mean, Pastor Vincent? Moving beyond the cross. I'm staying near the cross. Love that song. Still sing it. Near the cross. But I'm going to be near the cross as I'm moving away from the cross to live life abundantly. See, I made it to the cross to see that he was on the cross for me. I had to understand it. And then I had to repent of my sins, understanding that Jesus got up on that cross for my sins. It should have been me on that cross. So in this moment, I'm standing before the cross, kneeling, saying, Lord, oh, thank you. I repent of my sins. I believe that you are the son of God, that you went to this place for me. And now, since you took my place, I repent of my sins, and I invite you into my heart. You're at the cross where you first saw the light. You're at the cross. And he knows the condition of your heart is ready to receive. And he sends the great comforter. It's all about your heart. Are you ready to receive him? And as you're waiting to receive him, sometimes it's in that moment. Sometimes it's a few days later. Sometimes it's a couple of years later. It's about the condition of your heart. Are you really serious about wanting to grow? But for the person who's at the cross, who is tired of being sick and tired of trying to do things their own way, and they have given it all they got in their own strength, and they turn it over to the Savior so he can do it in his strength, he gives you something. I didn't make that up. That's in John 14, 26. He sends you the great comforter, and the great comforter will teach you all things. Now, John 10 and 10, Jesus tells us, that the enemy's trying to do something. You're at the cross, but the enemy's trying to snatch it from you. What is he trying to snatch? He can't snatch the cross. He can snatch your focus. If he can snatch your focus, you won't grow. If he snatches your focus, he'll steal your hope. He'll destroy you. So Jesus says the enemy comes in John 10 and 10 to steal, kill, and destroy. But then he says, I have come to give you life and that you might have it more abundantly. Jesus is over here now and he's calling Vince. Vince, you have been at the cross for 10 years. Vince, I'm over here, Vince. Here I am. I'm right here. Vince is over here. Oh, Jesus, I will stay at the cross. Jesus is saying, boy, don't you hear me? I've come to give you life and that you might have it more abundantly. Move away from the cross because I was put in a tomb and then I got up out of that tomb. So if you, if you want to go on my journey, Heavenly Father, thank you for those rocks. All right. No, there was water. 
water to hit my head. Praise God. If you want to go on a journey, go over here. Look in the tomb. I'm not there. Now, follow my Holy Spirit so I can give you life and that you might have it more abundantly. I want to give you peace. That surpasses all understanding. But you got to grow with me. Don't be distracted. See, you're going to have modern day people like the Jews in Acts 17, who, who, those, those characters, those folks who don't want you to have peace. Because we know Ephesians 6.12 says the battle is not with the folks who acted up. It's not against flesh and blood, but it's against principalities. A lot of folks, man, keep battling one another, but the people you see are just vessels being used by the enemy. That's why God says don't be a vessel used by the enemy. You have people in your life, in the workplace, wherever you are, who's trying to create turmoil and pull you into it. When you're focused on chaos and confusion, you're not in your place of peace. Have you found your peace? Have you found your peace? Brothers and sisters, listen. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33 tells us, for God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. But of peace, as in all the congregations of the Lord's people. Even in the body of believers, there's confrontations. There's disputes. Everybody's trying to shine. You see it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Don't let the haters dim your shine. Sometimes it is not the haters dimming your shine, it's God dimming your shine. Because you're trying to shine instead of give him the glory. Uh, they're not going to hear me on that one. Because that goes completely against what you hear today, I'm going to get my shine, I'm going to shine, I'm going to shine, I'm going to shine. I don't hear God's name nowhere in that. Yes, you are a child of God, but it might not be your time yet. You have to be okay with being hidden. Jesus waited for his time. It is not my time yet. When my time comes, I'll know what to do with it. Some of you are trying to shine prematurely and you cannot handle the spotlight because if your character is like those Jews who went into town to create turmoil, guess what? The shine is going to burn you. But for those of you who are ready, your peace will give God the glory. You know, many of us carry burdens from time to time. We want to be peacemakers. We want to make sure that we help where we can. But some of you have taken on too many burdens. I had to learn that the hard way as a pastor because the gospel tells us that we are to serve and I love to serve got here this morning, swept the parking lot area in front of our church, put the cones out, smiling, doing it, getting ready to serve. But sometimes people take the term serve a little too far and they want to become the savior of the situation. When you understand what's written in the book of Corinthians, the first chapter around chapter 12, Paul talks about many different gifts in the, in the word of God. Some people do this, some people do that. All gifts are important because they are given unto God, but we do know that there are many people who like to worship the gifts that are visible. And then when you go into Romans 8, 28, all things work together. In other words, there's a connection between what you do, my hand is seen, but my leg is not seen. My toe is not seen, but you remove these toes and I can't walk. 
So what we have to understand is that we're all connected. And so what happens in each situation in the body of believers, people are fighting each other instead of understanding that God is using you differently in different situations. And it's okay because Romans 8, 28 says, all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord, those who are called according to his purpose. What are you burdened about? Because other people may be responsible for doing that. Other people may be responsible for stepping in. See, you're trying to fill a gap that really you're not meant to fill. There are some other people who need to step up to fill that gap. But you're so worried about a gap not being filled that it's draining you. You have moved away from your peace. See, if you were meant to fill the gap, you would be in peace in the situation. But if you don't have peace as you're working to fill the gap, God ain't there. You have to get back to your peace, which means that in situations, you just pray over it. So I, I have some, some, some points I want to throw at you this morning, and I want you to tweet them out, Facebook and whatever. Point one, accept peace, not confusion. Accept peace, not confusion. What I love about what happened is that those Jews who went out to create trouble were exposed. Be okay with people being exposed. It's okay. Because God will move them out of the situation to give you a clear path to where you're supposed to go. Sometimes some of the people you are walking with are holding you back from moving along in the journey and you're so concerned about them, but they're actually pulling you away from what God has for you. Accept your peace, accept peace, not confusion. If you're around people who are always trying to gossip, talk about stuff, create confusion, trying to disrupt your inner peace, get away from them. Point two, rest your mind so you can grow in Christ. I talk to my wife often and I've learned so much from her didn't know a whole lot about women as I was growing up, but I was around a bunch of women. It was only until the Holy Spirit got a hold of me to have me pay attention to a woman. Well, you can learn from a woman. That's why I'm so glad he joined me with my beautiful bride. Don't she look good today, everybody? And she explained to me, honey, I'm not wired like you. I'm saying, what? What do you mean? She says, when I get up in the morning, dealing with a lot of different things physically at times, but when I get up in the morning, I'm, I'm thinking about what I got to do, and a lot of times I'm thinking about how I'm going to get it done, and I'm thinking about the end of the day, and how I'm going to get that done, and it's weighing on me, and I'm, my mind is here and there. And I said, wow. I said, man, thank you, God, for making me a man. <laughs> but I understood what she was saying, and so I began to understand the concept of weaker vessel doesn't have anything to do with physical strength. It's just God designed the woman to be able to be in tune to this world and also the spiritual world. But because the woman is the nurturer, she's thinking about how she's going to get things done to make sure everything's okay. But in that process, the enemy has a little bit more access because you have to be in your natural and he will provoke your feelings, your emotions to pull you into turmoil. As the man, if you're the priest of your house, and most men I see today aren't the priest of their house because I don't see them actually pastoring their house. <laughs> I'm just going to call it what it is. You're supposed to be the priest of your house, not the king. And what that means is, as the priest of your house, you're bowed down before the Savior. So you can stay in peace, so you can hear from God. And as you hear from God, he gives you wisdom on how to deal with your house. You are the thermostat. So when everything else around you is disrupted, you stay in your perfect peace. Now, your wife might get a little mad at times because you're not moving the way she wants you to move. Vince, take out the trash right now. No, I'm not. I'll do it later. I want it done right now. Sorry. People in hell want ice water. You got to be okay. 
with not doing it right now. Then there are some things that I gotta jump to. Jasmine calls. Yeah, Jasmine, what you need? Uh, I'm not just calling to say hello. And you know, when my daughter calls to talk to me, she calls to talk to me and it's so cool because you know, as I've gotten older, I realize that it's just great to have a child who still wants to stay in connection even in their adult life. And then she gets to talking and I'm like, I'm at work and I'm like, is it going to end? <laughs> she ain't calling me no more now. <laughs> she loves me so much. I'm going to get back on the text. So I just got to tell you this. The other day, I'm at work and I'm in meetings. And uh, well, I better not tell you that because uh, somebody else might be watching. <laughs> I hear you, Lord. I don't feel no more drops. Point three, which is critical to this moment, refocus on the gospel <laughs> when others try to distract you. I hear you, God. See, I thought I'm writing them things down for y'all, and he already and so he already knew I was going to act crazy. Refocus on the gospel when others try to distract you. You see how the Holy Spirit works, Jasmine? I was going to tell the story, and then I realized who might be watching. <laughs> she already know. Thank you, Jesus. See, that's, oh, amen. There's a leak in this old building, and my soul, yes, my soul. Let me move on out the way, because it's leaking right now. Keep your peace. Keep your peace. What we said this morning is the peace of God should be in you. And when you come to participate in corporate worship, you're bringing him with you. And when you come into the space, you can identify if he's there too. Our God is omnipresent, so he's everywhere. And that is going to be your GPS. Some of you don't leave the house without your GPS. As a matter of fact, you may know the way to your own house, but if the GPS tells you to go this way, you're so in tune with it, you actually go that way. I've seen my daughter do that. Not necessarily to the house, but she knows how to get to a certain place, but she's listening to the GPS, and it'll give you the shortest route, but it might take you through some places you don't want to go. Well, the Holy Spirit, he doesn't take you through some places. He gets you over he, he gets you there. And the Holy Spirit, if he stays in you, then you will be able to navigate this world. The gospel gives you peace. That's all I came by here to tell you today, that, that the gospel gives you peace. And when you focus on the gospel of Jesus Christ by studying the word of God to show yourself approved, there will be all kinds of distractions. That's why you need to turn off your smartphone because the minute you start getting into the word and you start getting an understanding guess what mama calls daddy calls sister calls friend calling they don't want nothing they just want to talk sometimes you need to look at your phone and don't answer and stay in the word it's okay because god loves them and he'll take care of them but he wants to take care of you so you can grow in it i'm thankful this morning that Jesus went to the cross for my sins and he died there. But he didn't stay dead for long. Three days later, he got up with all power in his hands. And so right now, if you want your inner peace and you have not found your peace, this morning I present to you the gospel of peace. His name is Jesus Christ. If you want your peace, you want to be saved from the disruption and the chaos that's thrown you to and from. This is the moment to commit to him. Do you know where you would spend your eternity if you were to die today? If you cannot answer that, this is that moment to make sure you know you're okay. And when you know you're okay, you moved over from death to life. You can live life abundant. So pray with me. Repeat these words if you want to be saved. Lord, 
forgive me of my sins. I am a sinner. I believe that you are the son of God, that you died on the cross for my sins and you were raised from the dead three days later with all power and you sit at the right hand of the father. I believe. I invite you into my heart to change me from the inside out. It's in your most holy name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you spoke those words to the Father, and you sincerely believe it in your heart, you're on the right path to salvation. Now make sure you get baptized, because you have salvation. Just get baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and find a good Bible-based church. We're here in South Haven, but wherever you are watching from, get connected somewhere so you can grow and watch what God does for you in your life. Brothers and sisters, I just want to take this moment to open the doors of the church. Now, what we just did get you salvation. Joining BGI does not save you. Never did any other local church organization. But the only membership that matters is being a member of the body of Christ, and that's what we just did. So if you need a good covering, a good home, a good place that will help you grow, this is that opportunity to be adopted into our local family. So if there's anybody here who would like to be adopted into the family, is there anybody? All right. Praise God. Praise God. I don't know what's next on our order of service, Pastor, but I think Pastor Cheryl was supposed to come up here. I'm going to let her come on up. I want to remind you all about Wednesday Bible study at 6.30 p.m. We have a treat for you this Wednesday. So I hope you guys pack this place out as we grow together. Also, I want to remind you about our abbreviated Saturday service at 6.30, uh, excuse me, 10, 11 a.m. on Saturdays. And, um, and of course, we're back here on Sunday. and our offering into the storehouse as the Lord has commanded. He said that I would open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. One blessing that you would not have room enough to receive. Hallelujah. That's a big blessing. Praise God. And I'm also reminded of the widow in Luke 19. Uh, to, uh, yes. 20, uh, 21, yep, Luke 21, and Jesus was in the synagogue, and he was watching as everybody was bringing in their offering, and the little widow came in, and she gave two mites, which was basically just a few pennies, and Jesus had been watching all the rich people come in and give their offerings and give their tithes, he said, but she's given more than them all. In other words, he said the sum total of everything they've given, this woman has given more than them all because she gave out of her poverty. And so 
I want to encourage us, even as our beautiful PK admonished us this morning, will you trust God? Will you trust God? We trust God. So on today, I encourage you to give out of obedience and out of love unto the Lord. And so you can give your offerings uh, through Cash App at dollar sign BGI Fellowship. You can text to give at 901-244-4688 and follow the prompts. You can give online at bygodinspired.org or if you're watching us on a platform, you can, uh, on our website, you can give from there. Or you can also mail a check. I wouldn't uh, encourage people mailing cash, but uh, you can mail a, cat, a check to By God Inspired BGI PO Box 1042-38671, South Haven, Mississippi. So praise God for everyone giving on today. Uh, your tithes and your offering and so we're just going to bless your offering before we leave and then I will turn it over into the hands of Pastor Taylor. Father God, I thank you right now that you have given us a way to uh, sow our seed, oh God. You said that you are the one who gives us the seed to Oh, and so we receive everything that you have for us, God. We thank you and we bless you, God. We ask that you just increase our faith, God, and help us to lean and depend on you. Bless every offering, every tithe, and do what you do so well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 It is great to be able to make it to church, y'all. It was uh, just a blessing to come and to hear this message about the gospel giving us peace. What I can tell you about peace in my own life, and Pastor V was, was right on the money. As we follow God's spirit, more peace will come. And there are a lot of times Satan will distract you to get you off your journey. But when you know that you know that you know, that's the way my mom would say it. When you know where to look, where to go to, go to. Cause see, I was in a place where I was struggling and I was distracted. And it got so bad that I began to pray more than the customary prayer. Y'all know the customary prayer, right? We just start to pray just to pray. We pray out of habit when God wants us to be real. And I started to pray to him about the situation that I'm in. And lo and behold, God gave me an end date. <laughs> so no matter what goes on now, I'm not distracted. I'm not, I, I, I'm focused, as a, as more focused than I was before because I know my end date. I want you to know that God will give you an end date to your problem. He will give you an end date to where your peace will come. Amen. Pastor V, we thank you for blessing us with this word on today. I'm so glad that God uses his servants, especially the ones that are willing to serve, that's not out for the show. Amen. Pastor V and I have talked a lot about that. I won't go in. Amen. 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 At this time, as we prepare to go down from this place. I want you to write this word on your hearts today. Take it with you, not just today, but throughout the rest of this week, this upcoming month, the rest of your life. The gospel gives you peace. It's not what we do. It's all about what he does. And it's a blessing that he chooses to give it to us. Not that we deserve it. But that's because of who he is. Amen. Let us stand. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you right now to say thank you. God, we thank you for 
your word. We thank you for the revelation of your word that it can be imparted to our souls. God, help us to walk out of here and help us to understand that it's you that can keep us focused. That it's you that can move, remove our distractions. That it's you that guide our footsteps. That it's you that will get us over the problem. In the name of Jesus. And right now, God, I pray for everyone that's assembled here. I pray for everyone that's watching online. God, touch each one of us because we all need help. But we want our help to come from you. So as we look to the hills, see our need, meet our need. See the chaos and give us the peace that transcend all understanding. See our problems and give us the path to walk out of it. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for loving us. God, we thank you. God, we praise you. And God, we magnify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, you can consider yourselves dismissed. You can leave the presence of the church or the presence online, but you can never leave God's presence. Amen. Soto County is such a special community. Our customers aren't just a number. When they come in, we sit down and have a conversation with them and we figure out what their needs are. We want to be servant leaders in our community. We want to